Welcome back. My name is Bianca Bruce. I'm a business coach and strategist. I'm so happy that we get to do this again. So recently I got an email from a client who said, you know, what I really want to know is how did you get started? What got you going? How did you choose coaching or did coaching choose you? Um, oh, such a good question. And I really want to do a good job at answering your questions and uh, being very specific with you about the kinds of things that I do and how I got here. In coaching, we do this thing, in my style of coaching, we do this thing uh, called Me Too. They're like Me Too moments. Uh, sometimes they're really funny. Sometimes they're kind of hard and sad. Uh, sometimes they are empowering and other times it's just a Me Too that you'd like to forget. So how did I get started in coaching? You know, I definitely found coaching. I don't think coaching found me. Uh, co your job description isn't out there in the world looking for you. Uh, um, coaching is something that um, I was introduced to because I was in a place in my life where I was wearing too many hats and kind of losing it, uh, was very scattered with my purpose, didn't really know um, how to apply myself effectively and, and empowered you know, um, in my life across the board. There were circumstances that were impacting how I was... Um, seeing the world and how I was perceiving the world and how I was perceiving my worth and my value. And so at that time, working in a very driven team in the real estate market and doing a good job, everybody looking in from the outside and thinking, gosh, she's really got it going on. Maybe you too, uh, me too moment have been there. Um, somebody said, you know, you really need to hire a coach. And I had never heard of coaching before, um, unless it was spoken of in sports terms. And I really did not have another hat called, you know, working out. So I wasn't interested in coaching. Um, but this person persisted and introduced me to a woman who was a master coach. And uh, I started working with her. She was doing the very thing that now I get to do with my clients. And it's actually my very favorite part about co coaching. And that is sort of that coming alongside, being an ally of the client, beginning to see the world through their eyes. And then at the same time, being able to offer new perspectives, new, new tools and skills into the concept, really introducing strategies that will help them um, grow and help them leverage their strengths, um, apply their skills and, and tools and meet a need in their work and in their community. Working with a coach um, during that time gave me a insight into what coaching looks like from the outside to others, but really what it feels like. When you have someone who comes alongside you and mirrors things to you, points things out, and always with the perspective of hope, of um, and not the fuzzy kind of hope, but the hope that, that gives you tangible focus, forward thinking, um, strategy, and tactics to implement. When when you have that in your life, um, it is really an empowering feeling. Um, clearly, I have feelings about it. It's it's empowering, and it's not the kind of empowering that you might mistake for feeling fluffed and feeling motivated. It's a core empowerment. It is really digging deep into your strengths, who you are, um, how you have been created, designed, your unique perspective, the way you um, perceive the world and the way you see yourself in the world. Um, and. And then also looking at your skills and your tools. And that is a lot of coaching. I want you to almost picture three circles coming together, um, your strengths and talents, your skills and tools, and then this other bit, the need. And we will talk more about that throughout the next few weeks because that need um, and 
meeting up with a strength and a skills, that center of it is what we would then call purpose. And sometimes we throw that word around, like we all know what it means, but what is purpose? How do we know we have purpose? Uh, how do we activate it? How do we behave with it? How do we behave with other people's purpose? How do we respond to that? Those are all gonna be questions we are answering next month. I'm totally getting ahead of myself. Um, so working with a coach was a was empowering to me and it helped me realize something that I have known since I have memory as a little girl, that when you are empowered and when you are strengthened at your core, you can do anything. I have one of my closest and bestest friends who has this little sign on her kitchen window and it says, you can do anything, but you can't do everything. And that to me is, the, is, is one of the values of empowerment. I think we are often, as women, encouraged and almost expected to be empowered and, 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 and activated in every single thing we do. And that is just exhausting. So in coaching with the me too moments, yeah, me too. I'm exhausted at just the idea that I have to be good and perfect and nailing everything. I want to be good at finding what it is that that I'm really good at um, and, and choose that if I get to, which is a privilege to choose that. Um, so that's coaching. When you're empowered at your core, does that mean you don't feel fear or you're not scared? No, it really does not. In my particular situation, I was deciding to start something new for myself and my family. My girls were very little um, and this was a new opportunity for us to move to California. I had gone as far west as I could and now I was faced with the Californian dream and this was going to be my Californian dream. But I also had this voice of fear, um, still very much part of the dialogue even though I felt very empowered, um, particularly after having done the coaching work with my coach at the time. This voice of fear had such a, such a, such a powerful voice and such a powerful um, influence in my life that I decided to shape my business according to some of the things that I was being informed from it. Please tell me that you too know what I mean when I say the voice of fear. Let that be a me too moment. I'm not talking about an actual voice. I'm talking about that feeling, that sensation, that that fear of failure, being scared. Maybe you're even uh, in circumstances that scare you. That was my case. My circumstances at the time were very personal and kind of scary and they led and forced a lot of the decisions. One of the decisions it forced is that I decided to work in a very, very tight boxed market as a coach and strategist. I worked with incredible business owners, um, incredible leaders in the community and, and in their businesses, but I decided to do this thing that you may have heard of of really committing myself just to them with non-disclosure agreements and not really wanting to talk about the kind of work that I was doing to any to anyone, uh, which was great. But after so many years of doing that and after working through my voice of fear, I decided a few years ago that it was time and it was going to be time to shed that box and grow and really move with my empowered self, take chances and go into areas of work that perhaps I had been too frightened to step into, be a little bit more vocal, be a little bit more public, um, have a website, do this, this this my voice of fear would have never allowed it um so i'm i was very excited to start that step and go into that direction throughout my coaching and throughout our interaction um this 
awkward as it may be sometimes, I want you to know that we're going to get into that and we're going to talk a bit more about what it looks like to shed some fear and what to do when circumstances become so overwhelming. Why do I choose to work with women? My entire career was really consumed with working with business leaders and business owners and I noticed that the majority of my clients, the vast majority of my clients were men. And as a woman around the table, as a woman business coach and strategist, I started to wonder where are the women? Where are women like me? And the moment I started opening my eyes to that, I saw them everywhere. We are everywhere. Women own businesses. Women are leading the community. Uh, women are making our wave makers change makers I work with women authors and women who own stores and women who raise children and teach at universities I wanted to work with more women so then I immediately got the question are you still going to work with men you know I want to say something I'm pretty sure men don't get that differentiation in that question. Um, of course, I continue to work with men. Why? Because here's the bottom line. Every man knows a woman. Men work with women. Men love women. Men help raise women. And I want every man to know as many empowered and strong women as they can know. And working with them is a privilege and I find that I'm a strong and empowered woman. Why not work with men? But my heart's desire and my focus is to work with women. And on a personal note, one of the most important reasons for me is because I was raised by women. I am a woman, but really I know what it's like to not be empowered. That is my biggest propelling force forward. I, 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 it's not just a matter of compassion and empathy. It's a matter of life and death for me. If I had not had women in my life to come alongside me, to become my allies, to work with me and to show me the path, not just coaches, but friends and, and, and associates and allies, women, pastors, uh, women on, on, on Facebook um, that I have never even met who are encouraging one another and have encouraged me, I don't think I would be here today. And so um, being a woman who works with women is the least I can do. And thanking all the women who have shaped me and, and, and shown me the way. So if I can be one tiny part of that equation for somebody else, it would be my life's purpose. Whew, that got a little bit hard and emotional. That's what happens when you are with people. It gets emotional. You get your feelings. So um, to kind of let you know where we're heading, because that's important. In coaching, I always tell clients, the coach sets the expectation, which sounds so scary, but it's basically, how do I show up? Do I show up? I expect you to show up. Uh, and thank you for showing up. Um, but you get to set the agenda. As the client, you get to pave the way. You get to say where we're going. You get to say, you know what? We're gonna veer off to the side for a bit. We're gonna take this road and wander off in this, in this area. You get to do that. But for the sake of this platform and on this channel, I want to let you know where we're going next month. So you have an, a, an idea of what to expect uh, and maybe you get to set a little bit of the agenda. And the way you do that is by asking questions, commenting, letting me know what it is that you're thinking about. Even the feedback is so important. So keep doing that and uh, keep t talking back, talk back. Um, okay, so we're going to this bit where we're going to talk about purpose and we're going to talk about how do we know that we have purpose and where does that come from? Um, is that maybe like just a, a, a big word that we use in, in a context that maybe isn't business related? Um, we're going to cover some of that. So why is that important? Well, funny you should ask. The reason that's important is because the paradigm with which I coach is 
that you and I have purpose. That's a non-negotiable fact. You have it. Now what gets really tricky is when our circumstances come into play and that's when we get emotional and we get a bit, uh, you know, caught up and stuck uh, or maybe we get overly zealous and excited. So in talking about purpose, we're going to address some of those things as well. All right. So if you like this kind of interaction, if you're thinking this is a bit interesting and a bit intriguing, if you're even thinking, you know what, I've never thought of hiring a coach for the month of October, but this sounds exactly like something I could ease into. Why don't you subscribe? Click that bottom below. That's really helpful. Go ahead and connect with us on Facebook and on Instagram and on all the social media things. Comment, email, we'd love to hear from you. I read every single thing that comes my way and it, it makes my day, but it also is super helpful because remember, this is not a one-way street. It may seem like it sometimes, but really the interaction and the comments make it so much more personal and so much more lively. I look forward to going, uh, going along with you and having you join me in October. Uh, maybe we'll have a hot cup of cider. Uh, promise nobody's going to be dressing up. And we'll just uh, talk about purpose and we'll discover some things together. Join me. I'm so happy that you were there. You have no idea. It's like a dream come true. I'll see you soon. Bye.